Hello everyone, my name's Jeff. I'm a recent passer. Passy? Passer. I recently passed the PE exam. And I wanted to take this opportunity to do a video. Um, I watched a number of videos myself of people's experience. And so I thought it would be a good way to kind of you know, give back to whoever whoever would find it useful. So I just want to do a little video here on my experience with the PE and my studying. A little background, I graduated in May of 2009. And I sat for the PE, I passed my, my FE right off the bat. Um, one of the last semesters of school, they required, it was a, FE review course and it was required and so it was obviously that helped out a lot because we did you know that's all we did for that class for the semester so passed the FE right out of the bat I didn't sit for the exam until October of 15 that was the first time I sat for it and I didn't pass of course and I was there was a number of reasons why I'd already registered for the exam and I was on a project away from home. It was about a 10 hour drive, so I drove home a lot and that obviously ate up a lot of my time. Um, I would have canceled, but I, it was too late. I missed the deadline, I think it was. And so I figured it'd be worth the money to go ahead and sit for the exam just to experience it it was a horrible experience <laughs> as a matter of fact I'm I walked out of that and I was very overwhelmed very disappointed you know I, st I started I started really reevaluating life and my career and I told my wife that I was never gonna take it again my particular doesn't require me have a PE so I was doing this just for myself so anyways I decided to sit for the exam in October of 2017 and I did pass so I wanted to kind of do this video to give some differences between the two exams maybe and just what I did and you know some of the things that I feel like helped me so that's my background a little bit um, the 2015 exam I studied like very minimally. I um, again, I was on a project away from home. The project was very demanding. I was living by myself in an apartment. But whenever I was at the apartment, I was not in the mood to study. I was kind of trying to deflate from whatever happened that day or whatever. So it was just it was very stressful. Um, I had done a lot of a lot of footwork to try to organize because I had graduated in 09 and was going to take it in 15. So it was quite a, a gap of time. You know, I mean, just simple stuff like units. I couldn't remember conversions because um, I just didn't do I didn't do a whole lot of design. I was mostly in construction inspection and project management type stuff. So I had to do, had to get refreshed on all of that. And so I spent a lot of my time you know, trying to find cheat notes. I was really trying to get my thoughts together for that first exam. Trying to gather my books. Um, I was very fortunate. I had a lot of acquaintances, acquaintances who are PEs. And so I was able to borrow reference materials or you know, practice exams, problems and stuff. And, uh, but there was a time when, at a certain point when I took that, that during that 2015, I realized I was not going to, have enough time so I backed off and I basically just went in with my reference material um, it was relatively organized but I mean I didn't I didn't stand a chance I think my diagnostics on diagnostics on that 2015 exam was like 48 percent which you know considering how little I studied I actually was I was not too bad but but uh, 
obviously didn't pass. So it was a very traumatic experience for me. I'm uh, just the whole test anxiety type thing. I mean, it's it's a real thing. I think you know what what little I did know for the exam. You know, I was fighting myself in my head. Um, I didn't really care for the testing venue. I took it in Tennessee, and it was in a huge like convention center type setting, and you could hear the lights buzzing. And other than that, it was quiet as a mouse, which is very agonizing for me. I prefer to have a some kind of background noise. I mean, I think I would have done so much better if they would have had some music or a fan or something on. Or I had earplugs, but you know they weren't. They didn't. I think that they're, you know, mostly designed for the loud impact they were shooting for shooting and stuff. They weren't really for the. It was still. They weren't really for the. Blocking out any of the sniffling and paper shuffling, which you know wasn't bad. I honestly, I honestly kind of welcomed because it was some kind of noise. But. So as a 2015. Um, I made the decision that I was going to take it again in 2017 because it was for myself. So I really wanted to finish it out. You know, I'd paid all that money to go to school. I got my degree, passed the FE. I got my experience. The application to sit for the PE was, was a uphill battle. You know, I had to basically, you're, it's basically like a, a resume um, had to have my references and whatnot, and so I had to go kind of build my resume that was specifically focused toward engineering because it, it would go before a board and they would review my experience and determine whether or not I had the progressive experience. So fortunately, I did. Um, very grateful for that. So, so for seventeen, I had already passed that. It, it, to the retake, it was just like one page. It was just, hey, state, I want to take it again. That was it. So, of course, you had to pay the the fee to NCES again to sit for it. So this time around, uh, it was much more serious. We were in a house. I have a, I had a new job. I have a new job. And um, everybody was super supportive of me. Um, I did I did some more footwork to kind of regather my 2015 stuff, um, put it together. And then based on you know my experience, I kind of whittled some stuff down. Um, so I was, I was much more prepared. One thing that really helped me was the school of PE. I, um, I did their uh, web based or internet based, whatever. So I had access to the videos basically from a th certain point in the spring until like the day of the exam or the day before the exam or something like that. So I was able to watch those. And those helped out considerably, honestly. I for for me, you know, being I graduated in '09, now this was '17. Again, I wasn't doing a whole lot of um, wasn't doing a whole lot of design work, so kind of getting in that routine, you know, really helped. The the one thing I I liked the most was the notes. Um, the instructors would you'd have you know PDF notes, and you could watch the videos. And so what I did was. As, as I watched the videos, I had uh, Adobe Pro, and so I could make my own kind of um, language, um, my own notes on that PDF. What I ended up doing was I printed those and put them in my three-ring binder um, and tabbed them, of course. That was tremendous. The videos themselves were, they were okay. Of course, that's where I got my my. Uh, you know, I could stop and rewind and stuff. You know, that's why I like doing that, that particular method. But uh, it, but the, the thing about the videos I didn't like was, you know, over here on the side was the chat. It was like a WebEx type thing. It was a chat. And, you know, the instructors would say, don't ask questions until the end. Or, they, you know, don't hold your question, blah, blah, blah. Well, there'd be one person that would ask something. And then all of a sudden there'd be this whole thing, conversation. And the instructor's having to pause. So... So if I was doing it live, that'd be really irritating. But for me, I could you know, fast forward and stuff. But uh, and sometimes, you know, people they, I hate to say this, but you know, there'd be dumb questions. But you know, we're all, I guess we're all at different levels. So the whole school of PE experience was good. I was very very grateful for it, and uh, I had help paying for that. So I was very grateful for that assistance too. Um, 
I had spent some money. I'd bought some practice exams. I think I had two. Um, where I had one from the 15, and I think I bought two more or something like that. Uh, I had all my old notes, which I threw out, honestly. I just started from scratch. Um, it was kind of overwhelming and confusing. I did take it in the geotech. My my depth was in geotech, so both 15 and the 17 exam. So I wanted to keep consistent with that, of course. I could have done transportation. Um, I, I've read construction was really difficult. I didn't I didn't do that. So, but I was more in line. I felt like with geotech, um, I was not going to do structures. I had all my notes and my notebooks. Um, one thing I want to say about the 2017 exam, and I do not remember this in the 15 exam, was there seemed to be considerably more concept questions. And so, you know, like for steel, for instance, steel design or concrete beam design, they wouldn't give you the dimensions or find the area of steel. You know, they which just is an easy example, but they'd give you, you know, like a picture of a, of a concrete beam and it would show the steel in a section and it'd show the steel in different locations. And the question would be, you know, this particular beam is fixed end, you know, span, whatever. And like, where would you place the steel? I mean, you can't, you just got to know that, right? You can't do an equation for it. And that's how, I don't know if this was the actual case, but I'm going to go say this, but that's how I felt like 50% of the test was concept. And you know, when you're testing somebody, that's what you want to test as a concept, especially for what we do in engineering. You know, I can go look up any equation, especially on the internet these days. I can go look up anything. There's calculators and all kinds of stuff. But in order to be able to use that calculator, be able to use any of those equations, you have to understand the basic concept. And that's, I think that's where they're coming from. And so... That was, that was different. So, I mean, I, <laughs> I have my good old $12 calculator. I used, uh, my calculator. I have two of the, I had two of these, the TI 30S, uh, 30 XS. And I had used, started using these pretty early on in my, the program at the university. So I was used to it, but I only used it probably a handful of times. Um, my biggest thing was the conversions, units. Um, some of my practice examples and my exams, they they were mostly metric, and they you know, and I, I hated, I, I struggled with that a lot. But on the exam, I don't remember any metric, so which you know that's good. Be tested a little harder. That's fine. And so I'm gonna, I'll get my, I'll show you what I geotech. This is what I took. Right here. And I didn't need most of this. I really like the idea of this book. Right here. I took my my notebook from um, my geotech senior level course. Because it was all tabbed for my, my final exam. I'd spent all that time back then in 09, you know, tabbing it. So I had it. I didn't even use it. Um, I had my one thing I really like is the I have my FE reference manual and that was pretty cool because it was much more straightforward um, I took a Thomas pocket reference just kind of quick stuff basic stuff I don't know that I used it I, have, I took my steel manual I kind of went in there and retabbed some stuff it was the steel manual is kind of one of those things where if you had to size a beam you have to have it and so it was just worth taking I took a uh, my senior level geotech book was the um, second edition of the Foundation Design Principles and Practices. It was the Caduto book. I took it, and then I had my notebook. Let's see, is that it? Yeah, what is this one? Oh, I gotta refresh myself. I had a notebook that I, oh yeah. <clears throat> I had a notebook that I had put together from 5, 2015, and they, and they recommended a lot of places recommended for the geotech to take the uh, NAF Act stuff, the soils, soil mechanics and foundation design. There'd be no way to flip through those books, through those things. And you can print them out for free. That's fine and dandy. Um, I had some other other things that I'd printed out and put in a, I basically just put all that in a binder. 
this binder right here. But there's no way. I mean, it wasn't indexed. I mean, I wouldn't be able to, if I had a question on it, if, even if it was in those documents, I wouldn't know where to find it. So, I probably could have spent some time on this a little better, but I, I chose not to. Well, I took the exam, again, in 15 and 17, but I used the 13th edition of the CIRM. Um, you know, they recommend the newest and greatest, which, you know, I could agree, but for as much as it is, I got this one for free, and um, it worked just fine. I, tab I got these tabs, so that was pretty cool. I made my own tabs and some of the, like, you know, re re reference stuff. This is what I use the most, actually, this book right here. And I also have, what was this one? The quick reference. But, you know, honestly, the big CIRM was, I don't even think I pulled this quick re this um, quick reference. This is the Lindenberg, Lindenberg one. And then my last thing I had was all my notes from the school of PE. I have them organized, um, you know, per discipline, and I basically just, I had the PDFs printed and in color, and I made my notes, and I would actually flip back through them after I had printed them, and I made even hand notes and stuff, and that was, and they were tabbed, I had, um, you know, some significant stuff like shrink and swell, OSHA, earthwork, and then uh, trusses, you know, geom uh, geometric Geomatics, was that what that is? Surveying, just some like basic surveying stuff for like transportation. So I had went in here and I made my own little tabs where on significant stuff that I felt would be key things to keep in mind. And so for me, like hydrology, flow nets, pressure distribution, bearing pressure, more circle, all those common type of geotech things. So that helped me a lot, um, but that's all I took. You know, I'd see guys bringing, or gals bringing, you know, like 10 gallon totes on wheels and stuff, or two of them. It's just too much. You know, you have, they say it's average six minutes per question, and you don't have that much time, I mean, to, to sift through it. And in fact, you need, on the easier questions, you really need to get them done quick. So you have time to look at some of the other ones you don't know. Um, I walked out of 2017 feeling the exact same I did in 2015 um, about the, my results, that is, not my impression of the test. And so I felt like, you know, if I passed, I'd be so happy. But I felt like I, <laughs> I did just as bad or just as good as 2015. We'll say this, with all this preparation I did, um, I felt like I had very strong foothold if I didn't pass it in October 17 I was gonna fully ready I told my wife I'm ready, I'm ready to take it again in April 18 I just wanted to get it done and so you know I, I'd known a couple of engineers over the years that um, they were older they passed you know they would pass their FE or EIT at the time and because they were didn't need their PE for what they were doing much like I'm I, me um, they never sat for it and they regretted it and you know so I was just gonna bite the bullet and do it um, there's a lot of good information out there you know it, it took some time for me to figure out what was best for me those videos I mean there was so you, on school PE I had access to it was the fall of 17 and, and then when when available the spring of 18 so I mean there were man I don't, I don't know there were 30 40 videos I feel like that's a lot of hours. That's a lot of hours away from studying. And while they're very helpful, probably my biggest, the biggest thing that helped me was working problems. I think I tried to count up how many problems I did. And this included, you know, practice exams. Um, any random problems I tried, I mean, it was well over 300. And I started studying for the October exam, um, before before the school of PE was available. But I was basically studying pretty hardcore from June and it consumed my life. And you know, and I'd heard that too. And I didn't want to believe it, but for me, as fuck I felt far behind as I was not doing design work, I needed that time. And so 
my parents luckily are still around and they're only an hour away. My in-laws are close. Um, I had a lot of help. And so my, my wife would sometimes work weekends, um, Saturdays and, um, I would have, be able to have somebody to watch their kids and, um, I would study for eight hours. I mean, I'd study till my head hurt, whatever I was doing, problems, videos, practice exam. I did two of those. I think it was, um, so I had a lot of help and I missed a lot of stuff that summer and, uh, which was a bummer, but obviously I'm glad I did it because now it's done. As you get toward the, so when I started out, I was just working problems, just trying to understand, trying to get my mind back in those, in that, in that train of thought, you know, doing the, doing ex problems and whatnot and um, conversions. And so when, as I got closer, so say like the last, so it was at the end of October, so September and October when I was studying, when I really started to focus on the six minutes, I would time every question. And, you know, you need to get in that routine, six minutes, you need mentally to know what six minutes is. You need to, f you know, feel it, you need to experience it. Because when you're just working a problem and you have no concept of time, it take you 20 minutes. You know, when you're looking through reference manuals and erasing, you know, trying to do it nice, no. You, you got, you don't, you don't have that time. So I used the first several months to study just to get in the mode. And then I started timing myself for six minutes and, uh, I didn't time myself. I did eight hours for the first practice exam, but I didn't really do the six minutes thing. I did for the second one so that I could see what the, what the time was for the entire practice exam that I did. So, um, use your resources, you know, we all know PEs, I'm sure, and they have study materials. And, you know, like mine, I have, they're stacked up now, so um, ready to pass on to someone else that I, that I might know. And so it really helps to network, and it really helps to meet people. And I can tell you, I felt way better. When I learned I'd passed, I had felt much more proud and satisfied than I would have, than I imagined I would have felt. And I missed, you know, that whole summer. My family had to do a lot of things without me. You know, I'd, we'd go to church, we'd come home about one, and I'd study for four hours on Sunday. Um, my wife, we did, we tried to do a lot of date nights. Our kids are younger, so we, you know, whenever we get someone to watch them. So we just, you know, we missed a lot of date nights, but I, I had to be in that mode. I had to be focused, you know, and I did not want, at the end of this time, I did not want to have to do it again. So I made sure I kept with it. And I'm very, very thankful. I had a lot of, I had an army of prayers. Um, I believe in prayer um, and the power of prayer. And so that was, you know, I, I had that on my side, I felt. And I'm just, I'm just grateful I passed it. I hope, you know, some of my advice, maybe some of my thing, my comments, help someone else prepare for it because that's that's how we go on you know keep the field of engineering going is learning you know and passing stuff on and so um i'm very proud now i'm trying to figure out how to make one of my daughters an engineer <laughs> just don't take too much stuff work lots of problems know the know the concepts don't doubt yourself and um I think I think you'll be all right, but uh, try to get your hands on as many problems as possible. You can buy, you know, books of problems. Uh, one thing I did want to mention too, that I was kind of disappointed to learn about. I bought, I bought, I had three books from NCES. I had a construction, transportation, and geotech version that I'd gotten from somebody else, and um, they were an older version, like a couple years before. I don't remember what years they were. But I, I bought, like for 40 bucks, another one, NCES. It was another Geotech, which I had already had one. When I opened it up, the Geotech problems were different. It was an AM kind of representative representative section and then a, a PM, the, the depth in Mama's Geotech course. The AM were the exact same problems of the books I already had. So I was very disappointed to learn that. And if I'd known that, I would have bought the book. So, you know, just make sure you know what you're getting. There's a lot of stuff out there. Uh, I actually even 
one of the guys that I'd watched his YouTube video, he offered his notes for sale, but just for um, five bucks. It was like shipping and handling. So I bought those, and that kind of helped me kind of get started, see how he organized his notes. Um, unfortunately, I cannot sell my school of PE notes, of course. Um, they're copyrighted, and, and um, but anyways, they're, they're very valuable. If you do get a chance to, you know, maybe your boss can help pay for it, you know, his training or something like that, or, you know, get your folks or someone else to help, because I think it was, I think it was, a, the one I took was like $1,100 or $1,300 or something like that. So, um, but, but for me, it was worth it. I mean, it, it was, uh, it was the difference maker. Had I not done that, you know, I wouldn't have had that structure of practicing and, uh, that valuable information. So. Anyways, I hope uh, hope this helps somebody. Um, pass it on, you know. And if you have any questions, you can leave comments or you can email me. I guess that's it. Good luck. Let's see. It's this is late March, late uh, late February, two thousand eighteen. I'm doing this video. I wish I'd done it earlier. And so the exams in April, mid April, I think the spring one is. Um, anyways, maybe this will help someone. I'll try to get this video posted and. And uh, good luck. Spend time working problems.